Welcome back to Cool Club's headquarters. This is going to be a new segment uh, and it's our review segment. Uh, we're going to do some reviewing on iron heads. We're going to do some reviewing on driver heads and shafts and probably other product going forward. Right now we're here with Mark Timms, CEO and founder of Cool Clubs. And talk us through this very first um, review that we're going to do. Yeah, well, basically we do, you know, testing on everything, obviously. And then we're going to start publishing this stuff in January in, in volume. So uh, you'll see a lot more of this coming up. This is kind of a... Now, uh, second run, we did one on the Ping I-230 uh, most recently. Uh, it was the first kind of cut, and we're kind of cleaning it up and make it a little better. But we're here today to talk about the Big Bertha iron. So the brand-new Great Big Bertha. Let's give some people the background of the test. We've come up with some graphics, so everyone's going to kind of be able to see this. But give them, give them the story of the test of this one to start, and then we'll talk about the product. All right, well, let's just take a look at the test, and let's kind of go over the numbers here. I'll, I'll pull it up on the screen here. Um, but basically, uh, you're going to see in the bottom of the screen the actual test parameters. And uh, right now, we're testing all the clubs at 80 miles an hour for seven irons. Um, but uh, the high handicap clubs later on, we're going to actually do it 70 miles an hour as well. Uh, ladies, seniors, it's more relevant. And uh, the better player clubs, the players, and the uh, tour type clubs, we're going to measure also at 90 miles an hour, which is about average on the PGA Tour. So that's something that the viewers got to keep an eye on. Like, right. look at that test parameter down the bottom. So you can see that. You know, this club might have carried 153 yards on the center strike. That's only relative to the max. 80 mile an hour swing speed. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, that, that number will change as the club speed yep. changes. The other thing we're going to look at doing too, this is uh, testing three quarters inch towards the toe and the heel. We call this the max forgiveness test. I mean, that's pretty far off. And obviously low heel and, and all the way on the low toe is a pretty bad place to hit it, especially three quarter inches out. You know, that's pretty close to missing the club. Um, but, you know, we're going to do another test as well for the better player clubs and probably all of them. Uh, we're just going to go quarter inch around. So, you know, if you're a better player, you might want to look more towards that. Um, but if you're a high handicap, this is what happens. So, yeah. um, it, and it also shows bigger variances by quite a bit. So, perfect. It's useful there. Um, the other is the club loft. We're always going to note that down the bottom. Yeah. Many, manufacturers vary so much. It's hard right. to get apples to apples. But. Yeah. You're looking at uh, seven irons. I looked at Callaway seven irons briefly before I came on here and all the different ones. And they range from, you know, uh, 27 degrees to 33. Well, you know, those are, that's almost two clubs different. So you can't compare apples to apples. So yeah. you need to keep that in mind and what you're looking at. And that shows up in some of the parameters too. One of the big ones we're looking at is stopping power and stuff like that. So, so let's talk about that. We've got come up with some cool clubs parameters. These are yep. measured by us and uh, these are, our, are effectively our own numbers. Right. And what we got here is obviously, you know, if you look at the graph here, these are all where the ball landed. And like I said, this is a max forgiving test way on the toe and the heel. Um, you know, your center shots are here, obviously low, toe, low center, um, or uh, center toe rather is out here and, th and they're color coordinated with this. So you can look at how this all works. And there's a reason why we laid this green out. So just to give everyone a heads up, this green right. is roughly the size of a PGA tour average green. Right. Um, and we put the, the center shot somewhere near the middle because most amateur right. golfers believe they're going to hit it be the best every time. Yep. But this shows what happens when you don't hit it the best every time and where your miss is going to be. Yeah, I've argued at some point in time that we probably ought to put the center here because the average golfer never actually hits it as far as they think they're going to. So yeah, yeah. Um, they're always over-clubbing anyway or, or under-clubbing. Under-clubbing, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, so if you're, if you're, you know, in a real world, you're probably more in this area uh, for where the landing area is. But it's know? a learning curve, you know, for, sure. for the amateur golfer. Maybe bank on your best shot hitting the back of the green and the rest of them might that, catch That's some. actually something I was thinking about. That uh, asked them, looking at all this robot data for your mid to high handicap, you know, obviously if there's water over the green, you got to attain that. But uh, for most golfers, you're better off thinking about, you know, if I hit it perfect, it'll be stay on the green. Because, you know, I mean, you don't, you're probably right in the middle with most of these, you know, right in the middle here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah so. There's only some really bad yeah. shots there that are dropping right. way short. Yeah. So let's talk about the forgiveness number. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of parameters, obviously. First, I just want to talk about yardage carry. Uh, and this is similar to a couple of other Callaway clubs like the, uh, you know, DCB and, you know, the more forgiving ones, the, uh, the Max irons. Um, so that's distance and that's carry. Um, all of your rollout is another part of that. And we might even add that to it to some extent. Um, and that'll be more in the details that you'll see online that you can kind of scroll through all that stuff. Um, the forgiving number is basically... Uh, we look at two things, right? So when we hit all these shots, the dead center shot goes, you know, here, obviously. Uh, when you hit it off the toe and heel, uh, we actually keep into account two different things. So how far offline right and left is it? And how far is it front to back? Um, for an iron, we're actually going to make that 50-50 because in theory, a green is somewhat round. Uh, we might actually change this around too. Um, but, uh, you know, that's kind of b both distance and sideways are very important. For a driver, for instance, I think right and left are probably 75% the most important. 
um, forward and backwards, not as big a deal because, you know, you're still in the fairway, yep. right? not in yep. the woods. So it's way more important to hit it straight uh, than how far you hit a driver. So, so, and some relativity, because this is our first one. So, right. 4.7 out of a five-point scale is pretty great. That's high. That's really high. I don't think we have anything above that at this point. Um, and, obviously, they've got all the technology in the world, which I'll briefly touch on, on, on why it's like that. But it's one of the most forgiving clubs we've, we've seen so far. Okay. Um, and then stopping power, the similar kind of calculations. Yeah, stopping power is based on a couple of things. It's based on um, basically the land angle and the spin rate. And spin, obviously, decays over a period of the time. And uh, Dr. Mace is working with me on the on how much decay and it has to do with how long the ball's in the air. Um, but those two things correlate to how fast you can stop it. And that's a pretty important thing if you think about it. You can get a club that rolls forever. That's great. But, you know, it doesn't roll through bunkers. So um, that stopping power number is pretty good. And this one's pretty high for the type of club it is. Yes. Right? So if you look at, you know, some forged blades and stuff, they might be 4.7 or 8. But, uh you, know, you give up a bunch of distance with that too. So yeah, you normally see a stronger lofted club coming in with right. that stopping power, but that's yep. this is this one really does do a good job with that. It's good mid, it's mid range, mid to high range. Right, and uh, uh, you know, and then the other number we got here is spin launch. Um, this is basically the launch angle of the club divided by you know how much spin it has actually, uh, spin rate of it uh, divided by the launch. And again, that's relative to club head speed. So you got to look at apples to apples. So we'll yeah. probably color code those, you know, for what speeds they are as well. And I was thinking myself to give people an idea because stopping power is really the result. Yes. Whereas the spin launch is going to give you the view of the ball flight. If you've got a really high spin launch number, then you're going to see the ball pop and, and raise a lot in right. the air. Um, and the stopping power, you know, takes into account some other aspects. So yeah, they are two different numbers. It is, but for, for an easy way to look at how, how well a club stops and holds a green, which is very important, you know, especially as you, you get better and better, um, becomes extremely important to keep it where it lands. Um, you know, that's an important number, and that's kind of an overall view of a bunch of things combined um, that we came up with. And that will become more more important for drivers when we start doing some driver data. People will be able to use that Yeah, the number. spin launch number will, yes. Yep. If yep. you're a high spin guy or you want to look at low spin launch number clubs, um, same thing's the opposite. You know, and people I all think the you know, lowest spinning club is the best. Um, not necessarily, right? So, yes. uh, you know, some people need spin, especially at lower speeds. Exactly right. So this is great. This is an introductory video to the concept of what we're going to do. Um, and again, just irons. We're going to do some shaft data as well, right. which will be interesting. At January 1st-ish, we're going to start releasing this to the to the general public on, on the website in, in, in a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. So almost all irons we've tested will be up there. And uh, I'm not sure it's January 1st, but somewhere in January. Obviously, all the clubs launch at the end of January. So the new ones won't be up there until we're able to put them up there, but we'll have tested them by then. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's talk a little bit about the technology in this and why I like it so much. Right. So we're just talking about the Big Bertha itself. Um, this is a great you know golf club. I, I I first saw this and thought it was fantastic. It's it's pretty traditional looking um, for a really high cap handicap forgiving club, uh, and it's in, you know obviously a ton of technology in here. I mean, it's super. It's all tungsten on the bottom, so it's got a super low CG. These are things you just can't do with standard steel clubs, but it makes it expensive. Yes. Uh, but the people who can afford it, um, it's a great golf club. Um, I would, I could play this club. Um, I would say of all the things I've looked at with this club, you know, the top line's a little thick. Um, if you could bevel the back of it, it would be fantastic, and I might even play it. But the rest of it, um, you know, looks really clean. Like I said, the top line's a little thick, but it's not bad. And a very traditional shape, nothing goofy looking. Um, this is a fantastic club for a guy that's, you know, older, doesn't have a lot of speed, but still likes to look at the clubs, you know, not more like a shovel. Yeah, well, the results are you can swing it at 80 miles an hour, miss it three quarters of an inch somewhere and still hit a pretty good shot. And still hit the green most of the time, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And that's three quarter of an inch. So most of the, anything, you know, relative to the center of the club is going to be good. Um, I will tell you, I, I did ask Sue O'Connor, who's uh, one of our fitters that works with a lot of seniors and ladies and stuff. And uh, the feedback she's got is, uh, I think the simplest thing she said is, everyone that hits it says it's so easy to hit. And I'm not sure if that's sound or the weight or the feel. Um, but they all really enjoyed it. So this is this is definitely if you can afford it, this is the club to get if you if you need some more distance and uh, even if you're a low handicap that needs this distance. Yeah, forgiveness. Yep. So this is really the start. You know, keep an eye out, watch watch all of them, then you'll start to be able to compare heads yeah. heads equally to each other. Um, follow our social media, our Instagram, uh, our Facebook, and uh, definitely get on our YouTube channel and watch all these videos. Yep. And any comments are greatly appreciated. We're going to change and tweak this a little bit more for the end of the year, so that'd be yeah. very helpful. Well, this is what it's for. It's for the golfer. Uh, it's a, it's about helping people play better and giving right. them the information that can, can provide that. Help them select the clubs right for them. Yep. Give them some information to use that with, some, some quantitative numbers to be able to compare them. Exactly right. Well, I'll see you next time for whatever's next. Yeah, all right.
Cheers, mate. Cheers.